With a career spanning more than three decades, Gwen Stefani has made an indelible mark on the music industry. But her singing and songwriting aren't the only reasons she's famous. Her bold fashion also sets her apart from her peers. Keep watching to witness her stunning style evolution. When No Doubt started making waves in the 90s, Stefani was known for wearing a bindi on her forehead. Many people over the years have questioned why she decided to wear an accessory that's traditionally worn by South Asian women for religious and cultural reasons. At the time, she was dating No Doubt bassist Tony Kanal, who is of Indian descent. That led her to become fascinated by Indian culture, particularly the sartorial choices of Kanal's mom. As she explained to Vogue in 2019, I had never, growing up in Anaheim, spent any time with anyone from India, and his mom would come down the stairs ready to go to these Indian parties, all dolled up with the bindi and jewelry and these beautiful fabric dresses. Kanal's mom gifted Stefani with a bunch of bindis, which appears to be why she started wearing them in the first place. Kanal and Stefani famously broke up during the grueling 28-month tour for their 1995 album, Tragic Kingdom, after which her love affair with bindis also seemed to fade. One of Gwen Stefani's staple looks is definitely her signature red lip. She started rocking the bold choice of lipstick in the 90s and has continued to do so ever since. In 2017, she told Marie Claire, Definitely when I'm performing or out for a meet and greet, it's my go-to color. And if you see photos of me, it's usually in a bright red. But I don't actually wear it every day. I love red lipstick so much because it feels like such a classic but it's still so personal. In the years since becoming a style icon, Stefani has noticed fans emulating her signature look. As she revealed to Marie Claire, I have a really vivid memory of doing a meet and greet in LA and over 300 women turned up. So many of them were wearing red. It was quite surreal. I could see myself in every one of their looks, but then each person looked so unique because of the rest of their makeup and their outfit. Stefani's fashion choices really helped her get noticed during No Doubt's early years. When out in public, she was usually seen wearing tank tops or crop tops along with a pair of pants. As she explained in a video for Vogue in 2019, she wore tank tops pretty much her whole life because she thinks that they look cool. As she aimed to be a bit of a tomboy with a hint of glamour, she made sure that she looked dolled up from the neck up while keeping her clothes more laid back, as she described it. That was just kind of the vibe for myself, what I always followed. As the years have gone on, Stefani has switched things up a bit as her style has grown and evolved, but her tomboy era remains iconic. As she told InStyle in 2014, I'm all about mixing things up. I've always loved a casual and tomboy style, mashed up with old Hollywood glamour. I love mixing styles that almost clash, feminine and masculine, modern and vintage, street and designer, glamorous and tough. It's about finding the right balance. In 1998, Gwen Stefani made her first big style transformation at the MTV Video Music Awards by posing on the red carpet with blue hair. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly that year, she explained that she was influenced by cartoon character Judy Jetson. In 2019, she revealed to Vogue that she rubbed a gel into her locks to achieve the color she wanted. Her outfit also consisted of a furry blue bathing suit top, a custom-made black skirt, and platform flip-flops. And in true Gwen Stefani fashion, she sported a red lip and accessorized with gems on her face. In her 2021 music video for Let Me Reintroduce Myself, she recreated the iconic look and continued to prove that she hasn't aged a day. The year after debuting her blue hair, Stefani switched up the color of her locks once again by opting for pink at the 1999 VH1 Vogue Fashion Awards. To go along with the bright hair, she wrapped herself in a fluffy pink scarf around the rest of her outfit and we of course can't forget the braces she sported while flashing her radiant smile. You see this money I got? Boom, I'm getting braces, finally, ha ha! In 2019, Stefani told Vogue that she opted for the pink hair after going through a breakup. At this point in her career, she didn't have a fashion budget or a stylist, and her style was particularly influenced by Blondie lead singer Debbie Harry. Gwen Stefani didn't have her own personal stylist until the early 2000s, but that changed soon enough. When it was time to shoot the iconic music video for Let Me Blow Your Mind, she was in touch with Andrea Lieberman, who had a big impact on Stefani's fashion from that moment forward. When the singer arrived to the fitting for the video, Lieberman showed up with a truckload of clothes and took all of Stefani's ideas to another level. 
Stefani described Lieberman to Vogue as her quote, soulmate when it comes to fashion, as she taught her everything there was to know about it. As Stefani recalled, I wasn't schooled in fashion. I didn't grow up in New York. I didn't even know who Vivian Westwood was. I didn't know any of that, because I just wasn't exposed to it in Orange County. Of course, the Let Me Blow Your Mind video turned out amazing. Stefani wore the custom pants that Lieberman designed for her and sported a visor like she originally envisioned with a bright bikini top and red jacket with no doubt written on the back. Undeniably, this was one of Stefani's most iconic fashion moments. After a successful run with No Doubt, Gwen Stefani eventually decided to embark on a solo career. In 2004, she dropped her first solo album, Love Angel Music Baby. During this era of her career, she was joined by four Japanese women known as the Harajuku Girls during her performances, red carpet events, and music videos. They mainly served as her dancers on stage and her posse offstage, as Stefani declared that their culture was also the inspiration behind the music and her fashion. Alas. The singer has been accused of appropriating Japanese culture, but that's not how she sees it. As she recalled to Billboard in 2019, when it first came out, I think people understood that it was an artistic and literal bow down to a culture that I was a super fan of. When you're from Anaheim and never traveled outside of your city until you're 21 years old, it was really crazy to go to Japan. She added, When I got there and saw how fashion obsessed they were, I thought they were my people, because my style was so unique. I get a little defensive when people call it cultural appropriation, because if we didn't allow each other to share our cultures, what would we be? You take pride in your culture and have traditions, and then you share them for new things to be created. By the mid-2000s, it was plenty clear that Gwen Stefani had a passion for fashion. So when she launched her fashion label, Lam, it wasn't very surprising. At the time, she hoped that the line would separate her from other celebrity fashion endorsement deals. In 2005, she revealed to Billboard, What's different than what's out there is the way I put things together. And if you look inside the pants, you'll find secret details in there. She also noted, Music and fashion, it all comes from the same place of creativity. I don't see why any musician who has style or pays attention to style couldn't do it. It's an extension of my personality. I can't explain why I like it. It's just always been that way for me. Like pizza. With Lamb, it's always kind of the masculine and the feminine. And Lamb wouldn't be Stefani's only fashion line, as she would go on to launch another label called Harajuku Lovers. Both lines proved to be hugely popular and turned Stefani into a business mogul. When she was awarded the Fashion Icon Award at the 2019 People's Choice Awards, it was announced that her fashion lines, along with her eyewear and fragrance collections, had earned more than a billion dollars in retail sales. All that has surely contributed to her estimated net worth of $150 million. Stefani has been an on and off coach on NBC's singing competition show, The Voice, for several years. She first joined the show during season 7 and was also a full time coach during seasons 9, 12, 17, and 19. She's made sure that her time on the show has showcased her fashion sensibility. In a November 2020 Instagram post, she posed on the set while wearing an oversized red and white varsity jacket with floral detailing. She teamed the look with a netted black jumper, black fishnet tights, and tiny denim shorts with frayed hems. She completed the ensemble with black latex thigh-high boots and acrylic nails. She also had her blonde hair pulled into a ponytail and applied a bold red lip. During the same season, Stefani showed off her versatility and wowed in an elegant feathery pale pink dress that she posted to Instagram the following month. She stunned in thigh-high pink boots while wearing her hair in a bun. It's not hard to see why one of her fellow coaches fell in love with her. Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton first met on the set of The Voice in April 2014. By the following November, they were officially an item and have since become one of pop culture's most talked about couples. As of 2021, their relationship is still going strong. So strong, in fact, that Stefani has clearly been influenced by both Shelton's sound and wardrobe. Musically, the duo have collaborated on a number of songs and even topped the U.S. country airplay chart with the tracks Nobody But You and Happy Anywhere. Stefani has conquered many genres during her career, but she'd never tackled country before she hooked up with Shelton. Stefani's fashion is always evolving and growing, so surely she would have been trying on new outfits even if she'd never met Shelton. But we can't help but notice how cowboy hats and plaid shirts have crept into her repertoire since they hooked up. 
This influence is especially clear in the Let Me Reintroduce Myself music video, in which she wore a plaid shirt and the promotional artwork for Slow Clap, in which she's holding onto a big silver cowboy hat. Oh my God, if anyone knew that you secretly designed my wardrobe, I would be so embarrassed. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's get to work. In 2017, Gwen Stefani got a little festive by releasing her first holiday album, You Make It Feel Like Christmas. The jolly and uplifting collection featured some original songs as well as standards like Silent Night, Santa Baby, and Jingle Bells. The title track was a collaboration with, naturally enough, Blake Shelton. Since the LP debuted on the charts, Stefani has gotten into the festive spirit during the holiday season and promoted the material at various events. It should of course come as no surprise that she did it in style. In November 2017, Stefani slayed in a gold dress while stepping out for a meet and greet at The Grove in Los Angeles. That same year, she appeared on The Ellen DeGeneres Show and dazzled in a sparkly dress while singing Jingle Bells. In 2020, she wowed at the Christmas in Rockefeller Center event in New York while wearing black gloves and a pink dress covered in bows. Thank you, Gwen, for all the festive memories, but most importantly, the fashion. We can't wait for all the new looks you debut in the decades to come. I could be here all day. I love talking about fashion. <laughs> Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.